My name is Michael Gitonga, and uh, yeah, do keep it right here. We've got some great, great, great things lined up for you. But for now, we'd like to go through uh, the press review, but mainly uh, concentrating on uh, uh, the State of the Nation address that was given by the President yesterday. This is the second uh, State of the Nation address that he has given uh, while in office. And of course, I'm sure many of us have... Uh, either read or you've heard some of the things, uh, statements that were made. Uh, but joining me now uh, in the studio is uh, none other than Ambassador Martin Kimani. Thank you for joining us this morning. And Ambassador Kimani is permanent representative to uh, the UN. And uh, you know? Right. Yes, and uh, thank you for coming just to, you know, mainly go through especially uh, the speech by His Excellency the President. Uh, starting off maybe with just your take. What was your take on the whole speech? Well, I thought it was a historic speech. Um, it had a number of um, very different things from what Kenyans have heard in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the president uh, first was trying to actually give the state of the nation to, to tell Kenyans what uh, the government has done over the last year mm -hmm. in terms of all the things, infrastructure, uh, the economy, um, energy, um, and all the measures that the government has taken to make the lives of Kenyans better. Okay. Um, and then um, the second half of the speech um, delved into uh, the challenges, uh, the very daunting challenges that Kenya faces and what the president intends to do about them. Mm -hmm. So we had the challenges of security, uh, the challenge of global terrorism, the challenge of insecurity, and what the what the government has done so as to keep improving our security services and our security response. Um, and then the president wanted to um, allow Kenyans to use his bully pulpit as president, to allow Kenyans to look back and see the pain, some, the past we've had, which has been a, um, a combination of a, of a powerful triumph uh, of building a country and developing a country, but at the same time, with instances of, of pain, with instances in which uh, uh, our citizens and even people who were uh, trying to fight for democracy have mm -hmm. suffered. Um, and so he wanted to draw a line under that by offering an apology on behalf of all past governments, uh, and that apology being rooted in a commitment, the commitment to look forward, the commitment to build a cohesive and unified Kenya, and so that was unprecedented in Kenyan history. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not happened before. It's not happened before. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he also wanted to take on the issue of uh, corruption, uh, and especially uh, corruption of some of the most senior people in our country. Of course. And to, and to say that he is not ready to take it anymore. Mm -hmm. He saw an oath to, of office, and he owes the Kenyan people uh, leadership uh, and also um, um, action and so he directed that action and so i thought it was a speech that was unprecedented in many ways mm -hmm. would you describe the speech as being accurate in giving the actual state of the nation yes because the state of the nation is is to say what we are all trying to do right. the positive things that are happening but also to grapple with the challenges the country is facing the challenges kenyans are facing mm -hmm. and offer um, leadership and solutions and i think in that way um, for one hour and ten minutes that he spoke to Parliament yesterday, um, it was very clear where Kenya was and where it could go. And the issue, of course, um, is to not only dwell on the challenges, but to look at what are we doing about it. Mm -hmm. um, and not what will we do about it in ten years. Right. What are we doing about it today? Okay. Now there was the um, the, the the apology that you've uh, you've mentioned. Uh, that he gave on behalf of his government and previous governments as well. And this is something that has not been done before by previous uh, governments or previous uh, presidents. Uh, why do you think this was important? And secondly, what impact would that have? Is it just an apology? Because it could just be an apology, but is it going to be followed up with actual action? Because we, we're in a country where we are so used to hearing things being said, but nothing is done about it. Okay, yes. Well, the apology um, was first to remind us what many of us already know, that in this country and on this continent, um, we usually take a restorative approach mm -hmm. to communal and political problems that we have. And that right. is simply to say it is not enough to jail people, to take people to court. Long before that pro approach came to Kenya, 
people had been dealing with matters of, of law and justice long before then. Mm -hmm. And so we had, the, I, the president was saying that here is the challenges we have had. And now we must come together. There are victims that we have had. There are people who have suffered um, um, injustice. There are people who have suffered violence. And now is a time for us first to acknowledge that. Right? Uh, it's very important in terms of restorative justice to acknowledge the wrongs that have been done. Right. Um, and to allow those who have suffered to see that their government recognizes the wrongs that have been done in the past. Um, and then following up on that to say, look, you cannot actually fully compensate someone um, who has been killed or the sort of monumental suffering some people have, mm -hmm. have had. Mm -hmm. But he established a fund, um, uh, a restorative justice fund. And that fund is 10 billion over the next three years. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a very solid action. And it's intended to actually further help um, with the restorative justice approach and to signal to the country and to those victims that the government is going to seek mm -hmm. to give them as much assistance and as many solutions as it can to first to quell their pain, but secondly, and very importantly, to demonstrate that the full promise of citizenship mm -hmm. is theirs and that we are very sorry as government for having actually at any point compromised that full promise of citizenship. Okay. Uh, he certainly um, was a, a speech that, uh, you know, got two standing ovations, which uh, would probably allude to the fact that uh, it, it resonated with many at some point, but he can't have covered anything. What are some of the areas you think that maybe he didn't cover? Um, well, if there was something that didn't make its way in the speech was really um, the, the global sort of clash between two ideas, one being the idea of punitive approaches to, to injustice and the other one restorative approaches. And today what we are being told increasingly in the world is unless you jail people, unless you use a punitive approach to communal and political conflict, that you are actually not doing anything about it. That is absolutely not true. Mm -hmm. If you look at any of the victories mm -hmm. uh, in terms of communities moving forward, if it's South Africa in 1994 after apartheid, uh, if it's Northern Ireland, if it's every conflict of note has usually been settled through the restorative approach. And so I think that international dimension uh, may not have come through because obviously he wasn't going to speak about everything. Uh, but it's very important for Kenyans to know that this approach of reconciliation, this approach of meeting and talking to one another, of acknowledging each other's pain, it is not an approach that is outside, sort of on the margins of human um, responses to conflict. It's at the very heart. We are doing what the whole world does, mm -hmm. and we do it very well. Mm -hmm. And so I think that may have come out. Okay. Yeah. Now let's go, let's go to matters corruption. And of course, this has been uh, uh, something that's been in the news for the last maybe three weeks to a month, very heavily, uh, with very senior members of uh, parliament implicated and accused and, uh, you know, in graft cases. And uh, this looking like it's the first uh, time that the president has said and given almost direction in terms of what's going to happen to this and they need to step aside. Uh, but having said that, this is something we've heard before. And uh, looking at maybe, would it be double standards? Let's look at maybe an appointment of Chris Okemo who was appointed not too long ago, yet uh, he had been mentioned adversely and even a warrant of arrest uh, issued uh, against him. Um, he stood for the, 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 he was going for, against Amos Wako uh, for, the, for Busia, you know, senatorial seat and was rejected by the people. Uh, is, does, isn't this double standards, asking them to step aside simply because they've been mentioned, yet uh, you're appointing somebody else who's been adversely mentioned in corruption cases and money laundering? Yes. Well, look, what the president needed to do, he did. One, um, he has been consistently speaking out against corruption. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking out against corruption is not merely speaking. It is actually very important. But secondly, what he said yesterday was that he has been following up on these issues of corruption. Right. He has called the offices that are supposed to take to go after corrupt individuals. 
the EACC, the DPP. He has called them in and asked them, what is going on? Is there a block? Is there something that is preventing you from actually managing to carry out your mandate in full? And they have given him their um, sense of what it is that they lack, the support that they need from him. And he has advanced that support to them. Then on top of that, he said, not only is it a question of supporting these institutions, but I personally, as president, having taken the oath, I draw a line. And so people in my government who are in my government who have been uh, on, on um, who have been accused of corruption will have to step aside. And so I think what we need to do is first to hold him on his word. And I think you will see over the next few days and weeks uh, the action that will result from his words. Yes, yes it may. There's going to be the action and they may step aside. But how do you appoint somebody who's in, been implicated in very, very serious uh, um, money laundering uh, scandals and a warrant of arrest issued in a different country? And, and, and like I've said earlier, the, the people of Busia rejected him as a leader. Uh, isn't that double standards? Well, I'm not prepared to, dis to get into the case of a single individual. What I do know is that the actions that are to come I think should be, will be judged by Kenyans in their concrete expression. So it's not about one individual. The fight against corruption is not against one individual. It's actually a systemic problem. It's a problem that has a dimension within the executive, within the parliament, within the judiciary, and really within many Kenyans' lives. Mm -hmm. And I think the president was trying to say, look, this is a systemic problem. It's not about one person here one person there. It but, is but how it our perception. institutions work. It, it creates perception if on one hand I'm doing one thing and on the other. It's not really about one individual, mm -hmm. uh, but it's about standards. If I'm saying that we want to get rid of corruption, then anything that uh, is corrupt or is found to be corrupt then should not be operating. I agree with you. I agree with you. Now, what the perception that Kenyans have, which is rooted in the truth, the perception of that Kenyans have is that there is corruption in this country. The perception Kenyans have is that they are senior people, people who sh are actually using their offices to benefit themselves against the interests of Kenyans. That's a perception, and it's rooted in truth. And the president was saying, I understand that perception. I am as frustrated as you are. And having uh, been serving him in my office, I know this to be absolutely true. So I think at this point, um, less than 24 hours after his statement to the nation and to parliament. We need to take what he said on face value. Mm -hmm. It was bold. He was not, he didn't mention a single individual. It was bold. He said, this is what we're going to do. And so why don't we see indeed what happens over the next, the few, next days. few days. Well, we'll certainly be following that up uh, as we go along. Now, the 10 billion uh, that was, uh, um, you know, set aside for three years for restorative justice. Um, what exactly is that money for, and what, how is it meant to play? You know, what is it meant to to, to do? Because there is so much atrocity that we have. Yes. Well, um, that has happened before. We've got the, the likes of the Wagala massacre. Um, what, what is that money set aside for? Well, you heard the president mention events like Wagala. The president mentioned um, uh, the detentions without trial. Um, he mentioned um, um, un unresolved uh, um, murders. Um, and so the, the list of victims through Kenya's mm -hmm. 50 years of independence mm -hmm. is certainly there. And so what this fund, 10 billion over three years, uh, is not a fund, uh, a, a fund of financial compensation. It is a fund of to aid restorative justice. So, um, what I think is going to happen is the details of how it will work will come out in the next few days. Okay. But I do know that the victims will have a very special place in consulting on how it actually will work. So that. Because the idea is for the fund is not just a fund that pays, right. but a fund that brings people together, Put aids reconciliation, puts systems in place, mm -hmm. and allows the voice of those who have suffered to come out. Okay. Now, very importantly, Mike, the issue, the president was pointing us to a future, a very bright future. Mm -hmm. and we, need, we need to summarize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And basically saying that this fund and these actions are not just so that we continue looking back, mm -hmm. but to allow us 
to reconcile with one another so that we can look forward. Look forward. Thank you very much, Ambassador Martin Kimani, uh, for joining us just to look through uh, the President's State of the Nation speech. We really do appreciate. Okay. Thank and, you, Mike. Um, thank you. Thank you.